All right, so in this video, we're taking a look at the new Cadex Polar FPV camera. This is obviously for the DJI FPV system and works with the Vista and the Air Unit. Uh, this is primarily a nighttime or low light or starlight camera. It's got a very low lux rating. Um, it's going to be similar to the performance of the Foxier Cat series. I think the latest is the Cat 3, but that's an analog camera. So this camera has a very impressive um, nighttime flying performance. So if you're trying to fly this in very low light uh, situations, you're going to be able to see a lot more detail with a lot less video noise compared to the DJI camera. And I'll show you some comparisons here momentarily. So in terms of the size and the weight um, specifications of the camera, it's a little bit heavier than the Nebula Pro. Um, it has a longer lens, so the nose of the camera sticks out more from the mounting point. So you have to keep that in mind for various uh, frames you're going to be potentially putting this into. The sensor is a 16.9 only sensor. Um, it is very similar in, uh, in I guess, the, uh, the way the Nebula Micro, the Nebula Nano works in terms of uh, only 16.9 mode and only high um, high quality mode, no low latency mode in this one, and no 4.3 mode like in the Nebula Pro camera. So as you can see here, I've got the camera already installed in this quad. This is the Camera 3. I don't have a video on this out yet. Um, it'll come out later, not sure when. Make sure you're subscribed if you wanna get more details on the quad, but yeah, I already have this installed in here. And um, I'm gonna be using this as a test platform for future um, DJI cameras. That's why uh, I built this quad or got this frame specifically for these type of tests. But I already installed the camera in here and removed it from the Vista that I was attached to in this kit. So this one comes in a kit here. It says Vista kit here. And by the way, you see down here it says licensed version. There is a chip on the back of the camera. I guess it's some sort of a video processing chip and it's the same one that's on the DJI camera and on the Nebula Pro. So this will work with future hardware that's going to come out later that's going to kill off um, all the run cam uh, variants of the DJI cameras that are out there currently. Just letting you know that's what I've been told. And But this is a normal Vista, not the new one. And I just basically took the camera off of there and um, this, that's why you have this Vista here. And this new kit comes with a updated antenna. This is the antenna that all the new Vista kits will be coming with. It's a lighter, smaller version. I'm told it has the same performance, but uh, it looks a little bit shorter than the old one. I didn't do the measurements, but it does look a little bit shorter, but it is lighter as well. However, the camera um, is also going to be sold separately, of course, on its own. I don't know the pricing of any of this stuff yet, and I don't ha even have links as of the time of the video, I will add them to the video description later and also various stores that obviously show up at. So if you see the video and there are any links in the description, it just means that I haven't gone around to updating the video yet. You should check later and the links will be um, down in that video description at some point. So no need to ask me about that. It'll just be in the, I'll just update them when uh, update this video when I get those links. Now getting back to the camera itself and the performance of it, you know, uh, you know, just I'm just going to show you here the what it looks like uh, when I'm flying at night, and you know it's pretty impressive compared to the uh, you know GoPro footage I have on here as well, which I'll show you side by side with some GoPro footage, which is mm, it's a little the GoPro footage is a little bit darker than what it looks like in to the naked eye, uh, but. It's um, pretty close. It's pretty dark where I'm flying here. And so you get an idea of where I'm flying, sort of the darker areas versus the areas with more light with the um, street lamps and also the lights in the parking lot. Um, but I think the, uh, you know, some of the, if you compare it to the way the GoPro footage looks like, it's pretty close to what you can see. It's pretty dark in this area. And uh, the performance of this camera is pretty impressive. You can see a lot more detail in very low light with not as much video noise. And so you can do that with a DJI camera to a certain point. 
and then you get a lot of video noise. Um, it's very grainy. You lose a lot of details in the video footage. Um, and then at a certain point, uh, when it gets too low, you can't see anything with the DJI camera, even with all the noise. Um, and this camera outperforms that by a wide margin, in my opinion. Now, of course, you know, the downsides are uh, the 169 only and high quality mode only. So for those of you that are sticklers for 4.3 mode and low latency, this is this camera is obviously a non-starter for you guys. I know that um, I'm sure there's going to be a billion complaints down in the comment section about that. Yet another 16.9 camera. I know. Yeah. I mean, everyone's looking for like another Nebula Pro camera um, from someone. Uh, but um, no, well, stay tuned. Something's coming. I'll just let you know that they are working on things. But, you know, this is the first of many um, cameras that are on the way. Now, regarding the field of view of this camera, it's a little bit wider in the horizontal field of view compared to the DJI camera in the 4.3 mode. Uh, however, in the 4.3 mode, the DJI camera has a much uh, wider vertical field of view than this camera. Of course, you know, that is going to be the case in most instances when you compare 4.3 aspect ratio cameras versus 16.9 aspect ratio cameras. The 4.3 ones will always have a bigger sensor and a wider field of view vertically. So again, for those of you that prefer 4.3, I know obviously you guys prefer that because of the wider vertical field of view. Um, yeah, this one has a, the Polar camera has a wider horizontal field of view. Um, but of course, you know, most people that fly FPV don't really care about that as much as the vertical field of view. So just keep that in mind. That's the, another limitation on this camera. Now the daytime performance of this camera is actually pretty good too. It, um, it's surprisingly clear uh, and, and, and sharp in terms of like the amount of details you can see with this camera. So this camera, in my opinion, in daytime footage outperforms the Nebula Nano and the Nebula um, Micro. Uh, compared to the DJI camera and the uh, Nebula Pro camera, which is almost the same as the DJI camera, this camera seems to be, I don't know, less over sharpened in its image processing. Like I, you know, I always felt that the DJI camera was a little bit over sharpened. And so you get a lot of sort of sharpness artifacts. This one seems to have less of that. So in, in the goggles, at least, and it does show up a little bit in the DVR footage, but mainly in the goggles, which is obviously hard for me to show you. It does seem like the, the image is much clearer than any of the cameras that have come out before for any, uh, you know any of the DJI FPV system, the Vista or the, the air unit. So that says a lot. Of course, you know, it, the DVR footage just does not give it justice of what I'm talking about here. You'll just have to try it out and you'll see. Uh, it does show a little bit, you know, and in the DVR footage, it looks like the image is softer. And, um, but in the goggles, that actually looks better, at least to me, in my opinion, than the DJI image. Now, the white balance and the color reproduction is a little bit off in terms of like, uh, certain sort of off white colors are, and that typically will show up as grayish, um, have a little bit too much yellow in my opinion in the footage. And, but the sky looks pretty accurate. It's pretty, pretty blue and it looks pretty normal and pretty close to the way the DJI camera looks. Same with things like grass and trees. Those are also fine. It's just that there's a little bit of a yellow tint in certain lighter colors. And I think that's because there needs a little bit of an adjustment in the white balance. Um, so I'm not sure if that can be fixed in firmware or not. Or not. It's not a big deal. It doesn't really bother me that much when I'm flying. Um, but um, I mean, you look at the DVR footage, it does look like it is a little bit off. Now, one of the interesting features of this camera that nothing, none of the other cameras has is the ability to change the um, brightness and saturation settings, which you can do by soldering a one of the pigtails for the, um, the the little joystick controller for camera settings that come with a lot of the analog cameras from Caddx. So you can just basically cut off the other end, solder it on, and then I believe uh, right and left are uh, saturation settings. So right goes, if you click on the, the joystick to the right, it increases, joystick to the left decreases saturation, joystick up increases brightness, joystick down, 
decreases brightness, uh, short press to save the settings, and long press to restore back to factory settings. Now, there's no OSD on the screen showing you what setting you're on. It just basically, as you click the joystick, you just see the setting, you just see the image change in the goggles and also shows up in the DVR recording as well. So, um, yeah, there's no like other, you can't change it with the goggles. You can only change it with that joystick setting. And if you solder that wire to the um, connector points on the back of the camera, so you do have to modify the camera, take the back off and all that. And I had to actually shave a little bit of the plastic off of the back cover to get the cover to stay on. So it's a little bit of, you know, hacking needs to be done to do that. But if you aren't happy with the stock uh, factory settings, you can adjust those if you want. And um, it does have a pretty profound effect on the image when you're actually looking through the goggles and also on the DVR footage. So uh, those things are available there for, for you to change. Now, I've actually um, asked Cadex, you know, for future cameras, you know, can we change not only brightness and saturation, but how about also sharpness and contrast? I think for me, for an FPV camera, sharpness and contrast have a bigger effect in terms of what I'm able to see over saturation and brightness. Um, yeah, that's just my opinion, but yeah, hopefully we'll see sharpness and contrast in uh, future cameras that come from Cadex, because it looks like they have the ability to make changes in the camera itself um, as it's sending the image out to the um, uh, Vista and obviously to your goggles. So something to be aware of you know, for future cameras. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, I'll uh, post additional footage down in the video description as separate uh, short videos if you guys want to see more. If you want to see something specific, let me know in the comments and, and I'll update the video description with um, unlisted videos to additional types of footage if there's enough requests. Yeah, that's what I typically do for these kind of reviews. But yeah, you know, overall, I like the camera. Um, I don't know what's going to cost or anything like that. Uh, so that I'll have to, uh, you know, in my my opinion on the value of this is sort of tempered right now because I don't know what it's actually going to cost. If it's going to cost twice as much as a Nebula Pro Cam, I would say I would say no, don't get it. But it, I don't think it's going to be that much. I think it's actually going to be going to be costing less. Um, it'll probably cost more than a Nebula Nano. But um, yeah, you know, again, uh, let's see. And then uh, uh, again, I'll update the video description with my opinion on the value of this once the pricing is. Uh, disclosed. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.